Hey guys, Chris from Propel here, and today we're gonna to be checking out the Turn HSD S Plus. Now this electric bike is really special because it has a fully automatic transmission. It's one of the only bikes that we offer in the shop with this type of transmission. And it has the powerful Bosch performance line motor. It's a compact bike with a lot of versatility. It can fit different rider heights, anyone from four foot 11 to six foot five. And it's compact, so 20 inch wheels. You can fit it in the back of a car. The handlebars fold down. And on top of that, it has a 130 pound weight capacity on the rear rack. So if you need to carry lots of stuff, this is a great way to go. So the HSD is a new bike in the turn lineup. It was released earlier this year, and it's kind of a mix between their folding bike, the Turn Vectron, because it's, it's relatively compact size, and the GSD, which is their compact cargo bike. This bike doesn't have quite the weight capacity of the GSD at 130 pounds on the rear rack as opposed to 200 pounds, but it's still quite capable. It's a compact bike, so 20 inch wheels front and rear. It's, the size of it is a little bit smaller than a regular bike as far as the wheelbase, but it folds down, the handlebars fold down, and the seat comes down pretty low. So folding the handlebars down and putting the seat down can be really convenient for putting it in a car or other things like that, but it can also be really convenient if you wanted to store it upright, which is a, a unique feature of this bike as well as many of the other turn bikes. So you can actually just hold that rear brake and sit the bike up like this, and it sits up on its rear end. So. And you can just take this handlebar here and fold it in place. So the, the bike ends up being pretty compact that way. On the rider height front, you have this really adjustable seat post. Now normally you just have one level of adjustment where you can just adjust the seat up and down. This seat post actually has two levels of adjustment. So you can go up much higher and you can accommodate riders from as low as four foot 11, upwards of six foot five. And along with the seat post adjustability, there's quite a bit of adjustability for the handlebars. So you have this quick release setup. It's called the Andro Stem. It's a turn specific system. So if you wanted to ride in a very sporty position, you can drop the bars down like this because you'll be leaning more forward. If you wanted to ride more upright or if you're a taller person, you might want the bars to be up a little bit higher you have that ability as well. I should also note if you're particularly tall, if you're maybe over six foot, there is an option to get a longer mast for the handlebars. So if you wanted to raise that up even higher, but you know, it's really nice to have this one frame style that can accommodate many different rider heights and ride positions if you wanna ride sporty or be more comfortable or whatever the case may be. On top of that, they have their own handlebar slight sweep back, giving that more comfortable position. And these grips, they're ergonomic grips, so they have a nice, uh, really nice hold to them, and they give you a lot of support. The normal grip, it it's just rides right across your hand, and it could cut off your circulation a little bit. So riding over time, that can get a little bit uncomfortable. In addition to all the adjustability of the frame, this thing has a lot of great function to it as well. You have all these attachment points. You can attach locks to here, water bottle cages. You have this front attachment point where you can attach different racks or bags, etc. Turn really makes this bike into a quite capable system with the attachments in the front throughout the frame, as well as this really capable rear rack with all sorts of adaptations. So this rear rack can accommodate up to 130 pounds. It can handle child seats, bags, baskets. There's all sorts of different systems for it. And there's a new system which just came out. And we also have a video on all the different accessories which are available for it. So you might wanna check that out as well. So this bike has 20 inch wheels, which are a little bit smaller than wheels you generally find on a bike. Um, but it handles really well. With the wide tires, you have quite a bit of comfort. So the tire is 2.15 inches wide, and it's a Schwabi Big Ben. 
This tire is what's called the balloon tire, so you can run it at lower pressure. A lot of times people are concerned with that smaller wheel, it's not gonna be as comfortable, but I find with this wide tire, with the suspension fork, and the addition of the suspension seat post, it's still a really comfortable bike and it can handle most terrain that you throw at it. Before I was riding a little bit off-road and, and it handles quite well, because the tire, it has a nice tread to it as well. And it's really capable, even in most off-road situations, unless you're going on really extreme trails, but the tires have pretty good tread on them. This tire, it, it performs really well on the street. It can handle some light off-road, dirt roads, stuff like that. So really capable in that regard. For the suspension fork, it has a Suntour Moby A32. And this is a coil spring fork, so it's adjustable. You can adjust the preload on the suspension. And it also has a lockout with a through axle up front. So this is where this bike gets really unique. It has a fully automatic transmission. It uses a continually variable transmission instead of a traditional index transmission where you have several step gears. This one, instead, you have a variable. So it's kind of like a, almost like a volume dial as opposed to a channel clicker. This has a certain adaptation to it where it has this shifter box here, which is connected to the motor system. It's powered from the same battery as the e-bike and it shifts the gears automatically based on your cadence or your pedaling. So basically you program in how fast you wanna be pedaling and the bike will automatically shift to accommodate that. And for people that don't have much experience shifting gears, this is a really great way to go. You don't have to think about it at all. Even if you do have experience, it could be really beneficial because you don't have to think about shifting or worry about shifting and you can really focus on just riding the bike, enjoying the bike, and maybe even more so focus on the road, which uh, can be an improved safety benefit of this system. Having this single drivetrain and all the gears inside of the hub, you have a, another advantage in that you're able to utilize a belt drive as opposed to a chain. The advantages of the belt is that there's no need for any grease, very low maintenance, and it lasts several times longer than a chain does. So compared to a traditional drivetrain, it's very rare that you're gonna need to go to the shop for this type of service. For the motor on this bike, it's brand new for this year. It's the Bosch Performance Line. Now this is the Generation 3 Performance Line and it's more compact than the previous version. They've eliminated the reduction gear, so when pedaling without power, there's little to no resistance. And they've upped the power on the system from 63 newton meters of torque to 65. That's pretty significant. I mean, the top power in their range goes up to 75 Newton meters. 65 is, is really plenty, and this bike performs great. Now, this has a full-size chain ring on here, the belt drive, but you can't see the motor as well through the back of this, so let's check it out from the other side. I should also call out just real quick these pedals on this bike. So they use this kind of sandpaper material, really great for urban riding, and I found them to have a nice size platform to it. And it's the sort of thing that can work with pretty much any shoe style, which I appreciate it. But let's check out the motor a little bit more. So the motor is pretty unique. As I said, it's the performance line motor. So a good amount of torque there, really can handle pretty much any hill. I wouldn't be concerned even in the hilliest areas with this sort of setup. The way the system works, it uses a technology called pedal assist. So basically you pedal the bike and it provides assistance, it just makes it easier for you to go further, faster, longer, etc. Inside the motor there's several sensors. So it's sensing how fast you're pedaling, how hard you're pedaling, and as well as how fast the bike is going overall. Based on all this information, it's taking a thousand senses per second and it's providing assistance. Now you can ride the bike with no assistance or you can choose to have the low level assistance eco mode about 60% upwards of 300% in the top level at turbo mode. When you're riding in turbo mode, you really don't have to work much at all, so it's really easy to operate this bike. For the brake levers, we have the Magora MT4 hydraulic disc brakes. They're really quite powerful, 
they're hydraulic and this is the reservoir is actually inside up here so you have hydraulic fluid instead of a cable it makes it really convenient you don't have to adjust the brakes they adjust automatically and for the calipers we have MT4 dual piston calipers now they're hydraulic so really easy to operate very powerful we have 160 millimeter rotors in the rear and 180 up front and they have really great stopping power another nice feature on this bike is the abis frame lock which gives you some nice added security you're able to lock the rear wheel you can also attach a chain to this to connect it to another immobile object or a bike rack or something like that and this is the same key that you use to remove the battery the battery on this bike we have the bosch power pack 500 so it's 500 watt hours of power and it's a little bit larger than the other hsd models with the 400 watt hour the battery is removable it can be charged on the bike or off the bike to charge it on the bike you have this little port here and the charger generally takes about four or five hours to charge it fully but you can actually charge about 70% of it in about two hours. To remove the battery, we use the same key as the frame lock, and we just insert the key here, turn the key, and we can remove the battery. So to install the battery, just put it back in place, and you wanna hear this audible click. That way you know that the battery is fully locked in place. And this battery on average, you'll probably see somewhere around 30 or so miles, but you can get upwards of 70 miles on the lower levels of assistance and on the high level of assistance, somewhere around 20 miles. And the bike has a pretty comfortable saddle. It's relatively wide, perfect for this somewhat upright seating position. And it's paired with the Cane Creek Thudbuster seat post, which adds to the comfort quite a bit. So it's a suspension seat post as you compress it, going over bumps and such, it you know, really takes that hit out of it. For the display on this bike, we have the Bosch Intubia, really good size screen to it, and you get quite a bit of information. So to turn it on, I'm just gonna hit this power button here takes a couple seconds to turn on. You have the battery life here up top, the speedometer, the clock, which is showing the time, and then you have the assistance level here. So right now it's set to off, but you can easily change to the different assistance levels, ranging anywhere from 60% upwards of 300% on the top level tour. As you're riding the bike, actually you'll see these 10 ticks fill up, and that will show your assistance level, like how much assistance you're actually getting out of the bike in that, you know, 10 to 100%. You can also get some additional information by tapping the I button. You can do it here on the thumb pad or you can also do it here, showing max speed, average speed, trip time, the range, as you see in eco mode, 88 miles. If you go up to the tour mode, you see 38 miles. As you go up to turbo mode, you can see 38 miles in range. So really quite a bit of range out of this thing. And if you think about it, it's really shifting very efficiently because it's done automatically. So it knows exactly. I mean, that's one of the challenges I think a lot of people have with the manual transmission. They don't really know how to shift the gears effectively, even though on the Bosch system, it actually gives you an indication on when to shift the gears and how to shift them up or down. But this system, really takes the work out of that. You hit the I button again, you have the odometer. This is really uh, one of the things that's unique about this bike in particular, you have this new Vinci cadence. Right now I have it programmed to 51, which is kind of on the lower side, makes it really easy to pedal. You don't have to pedal fast at all, but if you wanted to pedal faster, you can program this up to a higher number and it will set the gear system to allow you to sh pedal faster. You can hit the I button again. You have the trip distance. Now you can reset this, just holding the reset button down for a couple of seconds, you get back down to zero. And I should also note at any point you can hold this I button to get into that NuVinci cadence programming. And if you tap the I, again, you get out of it. But if you hold that I button down and you hold it down again, you have this mode, which is a manual shifting mode. So you actually, can turn the NuVinci into kind of a electronic manual shifter, which goes anywhere from one to nine gears. So this is really helpful if you have particular instances where you want a more 
intentionally control what gear or what cadence you're at. And then you can just hold the I button down again and then tap it to get out of that mode. You also have the lights here. You could just tap the, the light button here to activate that. And then on the lights, you also have a switch. So you can turn the headlight on and off here. And the tail light will always be on when the, when the light is on. So one other detail that's really kind of special about the Bosch system is what's called walk assist. This allows you to operate the bike without pedaling at all. And it's really handy if you're walking through a crowded space with a, a lot of load on the bike and you don't want to have the burden of carrying the bike on its own. Uh, you can wheel it along and you can use the walk assist just to give you a little bit of help. Maybe you're going up a hill while you have a child seat on the back or something like that. In order to activate the walk assist, you need to be in a specific assist level and you're going to tap the button on the top of the thumb pad that says walk and then you're going to hold the plus button and then you can see the motor's moving on its own and like I said, it just goes a good you know two, three miles an hour but it's enough to pushed along the bike at a walking pace. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this bike or e-bikes in general, just leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out. We're always happy to help and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Well, see you soon.